stages of fire development change when a fire becomes ventilation limited. Venting and vented are different. I hope you've seen this by now. The one on the left, that's when you take a fuel load and put it in a parking lot. It has all the air it wants and it burns and it follows that nice curve. We don't fight fires in parking lots that often, or at least not that really matter for a fire behavior standpoint. But when you take that fuel load and you put it in a house and it doesn't have all the air at once and it runs out of air and it's going to get air, where's it going to get it from? Most of the time it's from you guys showing up. Most cases you have to give it air. Okay, but do you understand the impact of what's going to happen when you give it the air? And that's really what's important. That fire is going to increase in size. Sometimes that can be used to your advantage, sometimes not. But ultimately, we're going to talk about you've got two levers to deal with. You can pull two, one of two levers. You can't show up and pull all the fuel out of the house. So you can either limit the oxygen by closing doors, or you can put water on the fire to cool it off. And that's what we're going to talk about quite a bit. Stages of fire development. This is a fire growth curve of opening the front door, letting the fire get fully developed, and then putting a hole in the roof and letting the fire get fully developed. There's several growth stages. There's several decay stages. There's several fully developed stages. Is this how it was presented to you in fire school? But this is real. This is what's going on. So when they teach you stages of fire development, you're going to start seeing in the new versions of Essentials and some of the other training books that they're going to look a little bit different than they have in the past. And how you interact during that sequence can become very important.